Democratic Nevada governor and the incumbent for the 2022 gubernatorial race, Steve Sisolak was verbally accosted and also threatened along with his wife at a Las Vegas restaurant over the weekend. Now the attacker was smart enough to film this whole yeah. episode. So why don't we take a look at how this all went down and then I'll talk about how the other gubernatorial candidates are encouraging it. Great. You're Steve Sislak, right? Right. It's amazing. I can't tell you what a piece of Sorry to hear that. You new world order traitor piece of bastard. You're in here without security? You know Woo! I want to second that. You're yeah, a you piece of I'm surprised that you have the balls to be out here in public, punk. Huh? Out here without a cop, out here without security? Woo! You got balls on you, boy! I'm not moving. Wait till we find all the money that flowed his way from Oh, man. Yeah, hiding the hydroxy. Oh, you in trouble. Let's go. Yeah, you better get out of here, Sisolak. Probably a good idea to go somewhere else. Where's your security at, huh? Huh? Where's your, uh, don't touch me, lady. Where's your security at? Huh? You want to sell us all down the river? You working for China, piece of It's called tree. You Traitors, you, we should string you up by lamppost right now, boy. Sure. Do you know what they do to traitors? They, they hang, hang them. Traders. That's right, Patriot. I think it's awesome. You running into a Patriot now, huh? Huh? Where's your security at? I heard about you banging that little girl and then wrecking your car. Does she know about that? Huh, Steve? Mr. Sissy Lack? You treasonous China working. Where's your security at? Woo, you lucky I'm a law abiding citizen. Okay, so uh, the individuals who are, were threatening him in that video are lunatics and believe all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories, including, I'm sure you heard it in the video, uh, the idea that he's hiding all the hydroxychloroquine. Imagine living in 2022 and still feeling concerned about hydroxychloroquine, like mm -hmm. still like, being on the 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 quest for hydroxychloroquine. Mm -hmm. What is wrong? Like, okay, and not just being like open to the conspiracy theory, but making sure that you fit it in during the verbal assault that you're recording. It is it, it is insane. And by the way, that was the tamest of conspiracy theories that were mm -hmm. uttered in that in that video. Um, now, the governor's office published a press release the next day. In it, Sisolak uh, mentions the verbal abuse on his wife. By the way, let me also be clear. Uh, We've we've done stories of ordinary Americans, activists, whoever approaching members of Congress, people in positions of power, and uh, explaining to them what they're frustrated about. Yeah. I have no problem with that. I know Jenk gets a little uncomfortable when it happens at restaurants and things like that. I don't have a problem if you want to uh, calmly express your displeasure at how a member of Congress is doing his or her job, okay? Or advocate for something. Or, or if you wanna advocate for something. This is different. They are issuing specific threats. Hang him, stringing, string him up on a lamppost. Yeah. So that's a little different. Might soon be a federal crime if the Republicans don't stop it. Uh, and it, it just, the right wing, on one hand, will lose their minds if Mitch McConnell and his wife are approached by activists mm -hmm. um, who are not happy with the job he's doing. But they haven't issued threats. In this case, we're talking about people who are issuing very specific threats about hanging a politician they don't like. Yeah. Um, so they issued this press release, John. Uh, he is deeply disappointed in how the incident unfolded, particularly with the language used to talk about First Lady Kathy Sisolak's heritage. We can disagree. She's Asian, so uh, you heard all the uh, China fear mongering and stuff in there. We can uh, disagree about the issues, but the personal attacks and threats are unwarranted, unwelcome, and unbecoming behavior for Nevadans. And uh, the worst part about all of this is. Uh, these kinds of people are being encouraged. So one of the people in the video, uh, the uh, one of the two men who filmed it actually, uh, Justin Anders Anders, uh, is a far right podcaster known for spreading conspiracy theories with his company Cannabis and Combat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wish the camera was on John. Uh, they sell merch like this: Pure Blood and Domestic Terrorist. <sighs> I mean, at, at least they're clear about- To give about, you an idea. Just to give, at least they know, at yeah. least they know who they are. <laughs> yeah, and so he, like, I, is it better or worse 
that he's doing it specifically to promote himself, that he's filming it. Like it would obviously be awful if you were just to follow an old man out of a restaurant shouting at how you wanna murder him in front of a bunch of people. I'm believing that that makes you look better, which I'm sure for his audience it will. But to do it specifically because you can film it, the, the easy access to um, you know high definition cameras has helped us in a lot of different ways. In yeah. some cases, it's led to justice, instances of police brutality, stuff like that. But it's also, I mean, let's let's be clear, incentivized absolutely awful behavior. Totally. And uh, that what we just saw is absolutely disgusting. Every single person should be unified in opposing that, but that is not going to happen. Despite, you know, for instance, uh, Tucker Carlson, he freaked out because someone talked to him at a Bass Pro Shop once. They didn't threaten him. That's right. We're following him around, he shouting at him. They barely, talked to him. He barely even raised his voice. Mm -hmm. Like he end of the world. He made a big deal out of it. Uh, this guy is like shouting constantly. Where's Where's your security? No, but like, don't you get it? You're You're trying to somehow take the fact that he doesn't feel he needs. Security, that makes him seem weak. No, he doesn't. Generally, because he's used to being surrounded by sane people. Maybe he should reassess that after this. But no, we, we shouldn't live in a country where any of this happens. The casual racism, the casual, like, uh, like threatening to murder people in a crowded restaurant used to be considered out of bounds. But the normalization of racism, particularly anti-Chinese racism, as well as the normalization of calls for political violence and the sprinkling on top of conspiracy theories, that's the modern Republican Party right there. That guy's not on Fox yet, but he might as well be. Well, there's a lot of truth to what you're saying because other Republican candidates who are running in this gubernatorial race are encouraging it. Now, the state police in Nevada are investigating this, so you know, issuing specific threats to anyone, including members of Congress, politicians, of public officials, it's a crime. So we'll see if there's actually gonna be consequences for it. I wouldn't hold my breath. But let's get to the people encouraging this, okay? So former boxer and Reno criminal attorney Joey Gilbert has condoned the attack on his official campaign page on Facebook. He writes, that time is upon us where these fraudulently elected leaders of ours will not be able to walk the streets alone. They should not get a free pass. They won't be able to go to restaurants. They won't be able to go in, uh, able to go in public spaces without being confronted for the damage, harm, misery, and murder they caused to the citizens and children of this state and country. What are you talking about? I think we know what he's talking about. Do we? He wants politicians like that to be absolutely terrified of being attacked or murdered on the streets. That's what he wants. No, I get that, but like the allegations. Mm -hmm. I, like I'm, what, what? I'm sure there's nothing more to it than the conspiracy theories that were shouted at the guy in the restaurant. <sighs> like it's just how do you how do you get elected as a Republican doing something like that? Now he may not be the most skilled at it necessarily, but that's the only path at this point. There's no, there's no Paul Ryan's. Paul Ryan was a, a, an awful guy, but his reputation was that he was a wonk. He was a numbers guy, or whatever. Who are the numbers oh guys? God. What is Masson Cawthorn a numbers guy? Marjorie Green likes the numbers. There's that doesn't exist anymore. There are, there are like there are right wing trolls in media. That's their their media arm, Fox News, and the so called right wing media. That's exactly the same as Fox News. And some of them sometimes run for office. That's that's it. That's the whole spectrum right now. Well, his uh, statement continues, I heard that our lovely governor got run out of Lindo Michoacan Mexican restaurant here in Las Vegas tonight. Man, Mexican food sounds so good. And I cannot think of a more deserving person than the corrupt, bought and paid for hack. Can we just, I'm sure Joey Gilbert isn't taking mm -hmm. um, campaign donations as he's uh, you know, seeking the governor's office mm -hmm. in this election. Definitely. Anyway, um, and you know, the Facebook page later claimed that the governor murdered people with the COVID vaccine and remdesivir given at hospitals. Uh -huh. I thought the right wing loved remdesivir. Maybe he's Isn't implying, that maybe he hid that too. He had a little bit of room after he's done hiding all the hydroxychloroquine, so he hid some of the remdesivir too. Here's, I don't know. here's a post about Joey Gilbert. Purple meathead stood out to the sedition hunters on January. Like he was there. He was there on January 6th because, of course, he was. No, these people Surprising. are just an embarrassment to the country. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas Councilwoman Michelle Fiore 
Another Republican candidate running for governor said Sisolak was lucky it was just words. And if you look at the history of dictators, pitchforks will be next. What dictator? Sisolak is a dictator? I, we, we didn't know and it's so close, it's only a couple states away. We've been missing it the whole time. You can go get, you can go, you can go, I don't even know if I can say this word, I probably can. You can pay for someone to fillet you in Nevada. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no dictator in Nevada. There's no dictator, legally, by the way, legally, mm-hmm. legally, legally. Mm-hmm. Really? Nevada is run by a dictator? <sighs> I'm sure he's got kids in Wayfair cabinets. Like again, none of it has to make any sense. And beyond just not making sense, we're we're sort of reaching a point where it's difficult. You might experience this from us. It's difficult to even grapple with the things that they're saying because we no longer even get the references they're making. They're so insane. Mm-hmm. You really have to be deep into these forums and the private telegram groups and the the weirdo podcasters to even know how many steps of crazy they've gone down. But this is a reminder to people, I was live streaming about this earlier. I know a lot of people, not the sort of people that watch our show, but a lot of people felt like, oh, good, we got rid of Trump, we're good now. We got out of the scary time. Have we? No. I don't know, in Texas they have bounties for people who help women exercise their reproductive rights. They're sending child protective services to people's houses if you helped your your, your trans child uh, in, in terms of their medically necessary help. Um, we've got complete and utter normalization. In fact, like they are horny for threats of political violence. Where do we all think that this ends? Yeah. Eight awesome years of Joe Biden and then we're good on into the Buttigieg years. No, this is looking like really dark and a lot of people are checked out. A lot of people that, you know, whether they got all the facts right or whatever in the Trump years were at least engaged. A lot of them are gone. You're the ones that remain. We're cruising yeah. towards a midterm election it's where- It's so true, guys, it's so true. You know, one of the things that's pretty noticeable across all news and politics content on all platforms is just a complete drop in interest. Like people yeah. people have checked out. Yeah, and, I've seen the polls. And it's concerning because it's, it's just one way of telling that people are not as engaged politically and, and we need people to be engaged. Mm-hmm. We need people, like right now is when people should be organizing. Right now is when you should be canvassing for progressive candidates. Right now is when you should be getting, like the thing that frustrates me the most, John, is labor stories barely get any attention. Mm-hmm. You know, any like and and that's the only place where I find any hope in this country right now mm-hmm. where you see real gains being made by workers at places like John Deere, Nabisco, whatever. Starbucks. So, yeah. Starbucks, yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of examples and we've talked about them on the show, but my point in bringing that up is not like, oh, we get such low viewership for those stories. It's what that low viewership means. Mm-hmm. It means that the very stories that should be inspiring people to get active that to help build momentum are not doing it like because yeah. people are so checked out and on one hand i don't blame them like there are times you know in my career where i'm like i don't know if i can keep doing this like mm-hmm. i want to check out but you can't give up and you can't just assume that because you have like some milk toast democrat in office things are fine things are not fine things have continued to devolve and the right wing gets it when it comes to organizing uniting doing whatever it takes to ensure that they win, yeah. that they get their judges confirmed, that they n- not only have an impact on the country in the short term, but have a long lasting impact on the country. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I totally agree. This is a time, I understand the, the desire to check out, but we need to be preparing for the next step because we, we had an opportunity to choose two captains of the ship in 2020. Right. We chose the incompetent one rather than the rabid wildebeest. And uh, okay, so that's good, um, but it is going down. It is sinking, it's gonna get worse by the end of this year. And so we need to be prepared for the next steps. We need to be, like you said, supporting candidates, but also still trying to persuade people around you on the issues. I understand it can be incredibly frustrating when we know that people already agree with us, but the more work we can do at the individual level, the better placed we are when we get another chance, which is coming up. It's 2024 is gonna be here before you know it. Yeah. It's either gonna be going back to Trump or it's gonna be replacing Biden with someone who will actually take seriously the crises that we face. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. 
you'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.